Hey everyone, I'm Johnny and today we're going to be breaking down all the aircraft featured in Band of Brothers. For those of you who've never seen Band of Brothers, it is universally recognized as one of the greatest works of military cinema of all time. The story follows 506 Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division from basic training in 1942 all the way to the end of World War II in the European theater. The story takes minor liberties with historical facts but remains one of the best and most accurate cinematic recreations of World War II in the European theater. Onto the aircraft. Starting in order of appearance, episode 1 titled Currahee, we have the most important aircraft pivotal to the storyline and that's the Douglas C-47 Skytrain, also known as the Dakota in British RAF service. C-47s being pivotal to the storyline and also readily available, they are the only real aircraft used during Band of Brothers. The studio managed to procure four C-47s for the production. Our aircraft story starts with C-47s at Jump Training School in Fort Benning, Georgia. The 506 at this point have already completed training at Camp Tokoa and now have to complete five jumps from a C-47 in order to obtain their jump wings and become certified Army paratroopers. This would now qualify them to earn an extra $50 each month as jump pay. No more curry, no more Captain Sobel. In training, we see soldiers learning to jump in sticks of 12, but on D-Day, the C-47s would be carrying 28 soldiers in full combat load. The C-47s had a payload capacity of 6,000 pounds and could carry a fully assembled Jeep or a 37mm cannon. C-47s would further tow gliders such as the Horsa and Waco during D-Day. These gliders again would carry further men and equipment. It is important to know that C-47s at this point in the war had already proven themselves in Europe, having dropped over 4,000 paratroopers in Sicily in July of 1943. Episode 1 also features a quick flyby by two Spitfires to signify that the 506 Airborne are now indeed in Britain. Over 22,000 Spitfires were built during World War II and just over 60 remain airworthy today. A Spitfire had enough ammunition for 16 seconds of continuous firing. Episode 2 of Band of Brothers, aka Day of Days, is our actual drop from the C-47s. We see the C-47s painted in D-Day invasion stripes that would adorn all twin engine and single engine planes flying on D-Day so that ground and naval forces could identify them as allied. Four engine aircraft would not receive D-Day stripes as there were no prolific four engine aircraft being flown by the Luftwaffe at the time. Our next aircraft featured is in episode 4 titled Replacements. This episode finds the 506 in Holland, having once again paradropped from C-47s in what would be titled Operation Market Garden. This operation was an even bigger airborne operation than D-Day involving 35,000 paratroopers and glider infantry. Before our C-47s take off in the assembly area, we get a quick CGI flyby of two P-51D Mustangs. You can tell it's a P-51 Mustang D because it has the excellent bubble top canopy which greatly improved the pilot's vision. These Mustangs had drop tanks which are visible on this shot, allowing them to protect American bombers far into Germany. Drop tanks extend the fuel capacity of aircraft, but can also be prematurely dropped should the aircraft need to decrease weight to become more maneuverable. P-51 Mustang shot down 4,950 enemy aircraft in Europe alone. In Episode 6, Bastogne, we have a strafing run by a Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt actually strafes the 506 by mistake, despite them throwing red smoke in an attempt to signal them from the ground. This was not an uncommon occurrence and friendly fire even in modern combat from the air does occur. The rate of friendly fire deaths for all US troops in World War II was 12 to 14 percent. P-47 Thunderbolts, however, were of huge support to the war. Their robust design made them extraordinary ground attack aircraft able to terrorize German ground forces. Interesting side note, the US sent 203 P-47s to the Soviet Union and one was even captured and used by the Luftwaffe. Lastly, and again in episode 6, we have a shot of this time Axis air power. Bastogne and the 506 Airborne was bombed briefly by Heinkel HE-111s. This bombing was particularly tragic taking place on Christmas Eve. The Heinkels hit an American aid station killing 21. The HE-111 was used throughout the war in virtually every theater. It was even used as a torpedo bomber in the Atlantic and Arctic. However, at this point in the war, it was considered fairly antiquated, having been originally designed in 1934. That concludes the aircraft used in Band of Brothers. I am not a professional historian, so if you want to add or critique anything I covered in this video, feel free to politely do so in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.